My wife, Janessa, and I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Price and his wife, Betty, at a book signing in the early 2000s. We took a photo with them, and I always cherished that, especially since I lost it. But we found him to be a genuine man of God, and his teaching was phenomenal because he aligned himself with the Word of God. And the series Race, Religion, and Racism needs to be taught on a, re on a regular basis. So. I'm going to do whatever I can to help promote this message of truth. And to answer a question someone had saying, why did he call out Carlton Pearson, but not the unnamed minister? Well, that's simple. He had already stated beforehand, if you write him a letter, whether it be a point of contention or praise, he'll read the letter on television and mention your name. And that's what he did with Mr. Pearson, who definitely needed to be called out. And as we have discovered years later, Mr. Uh, Pearson became a heretic. And as for the unnamed minister, he'll be revealed. I've said it before, but I want to say it again. I obviously do not agree with the position of the Ku Klux Klan, but I have to admire their honesty. I said it before, but I, it's too bad that the church, this so-called born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, Bible-toting, tape recorder playing, red, orange, and green, and yellow, highlight marking Christian can't be as honest as the Ku Klux Klan. They don't leave any doubt about how they feel about black folk. They don't like niggas, and they'll tell you right now, we don't like niggas, we don't want niggas around us, and we sure don't want to intermarry with niggas. Hey, I can appreciate that. I mean, I don't agree with them, but at least I know where the snake is. So I don't have to step on that sucker by accident and get bitten. The Christians, the church, playing these games and not being honest about it. I'll tell you some other things about this tape shortly, but it's, it's, I think it's an important message. And it speaks to this issue that I have been talking about. This tape recorded message was done about four and a half to five years ago. And um, there were some names that were mentioned in the tape. And so we have bleeped those names out. Because as I say, I'm not interested per se in you knowing who it is. I'm interested in the content of what is being said because I think it speaks to an issue. I think that it's symptomatic and it gives us a good clear indication of where problems lie. I could tell you the name of the person. Now, some people are going to recognize it because they heard the tape before, but they already know who it is anyway, so me playing it ain't changing nothing. Okay? Roll the tape. I hope you can hear this. <clears throat> I can't tell your kids who to go with and who not to go date. Not my responsibility. If you don't want your kids dating somebody, then you control it. But you control it a long time before they ever get to be dating age. You talk about, we're friends. We can be friends with everybody. We are not prejudiced, but we are not going to date this group of people. It's not in our, it's not in our, it's not, it's not in our culture to do it. We're not going to do it. If you want to, there's no problem with that. That's fine. You're not a racist. You're, and you're not prejudiced just because you set down those kind of rules. Hello? If you want, I'm walking deep, that's right. But if you want, if you want mix, fine. That's, if you want it, that's fine. But if you don't want it, then you control it. And you don't have to be a racist about it. And I'm not afraid to talk about it because I, I've got 30% of a different uh, black in this, in this congregation. And I've talked to many of them. Talked to the men about it. I've talked to the about it. I've talked to the I've talked to a lot of these people about it. And they all understand where I'm coming from. We got some beautiful mixed marriages in our congregation, but I have talked to them also, and they have, they have not been without their problems. <coughs> Hello? Come on, people, let's be, let's get our head out of the sand. And 
I'll get accused again like I always do that I'm against mixed marriage. I did not say I was against mixed marriages. I said it's up to you, but if you don't want your kids involved in it, then you're the one that has to do something about it, not the church. And just because you change churches, it's not going to help the problem. Some people say, well, I we'll change churches. No, we'll move away. We'll go somewhere else and start all over. No, it's not. You, you, you're, not you're just going to take the problem with you. Hello? Many years ago. Listen carefully. was in the kindergarten. We came home. This young little man was there, nice young man. We just talked to the We said, hey, look, we friends, we play. We, we go together as groups, but we don't date one another. I mean, we started in kindergarten. Hello? That just was our rules. Now, once, once somebody gets up and they get of age, they get to be 21, 18, then they can choose to do what they want to. You ain't got no choice. You, you, you can't do nothing about it. They're on their own. But I tell you what, the Bible says if you train a child up the way you want it to go, when it gets old, it won't depart. It may wobble around a while, but it'll come back. Hello? You say, well, my Lord, soul pastor, you, you're talking heavy. I am, and I've got close to air conditioning because I'm sweating like everything. But I tell you something. I just decided that if I'm gonna teach on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna turn over every stone there is. Like it or lump it. Amen or oh me. Now I'm gonna tell you what, you, I I'm white and I'm saying this, so a lot of people Yeah, he's your white. Hey! I got a lot of we have had a lot of the, the black parents that have come to us and they said, we don't like this, we don't want this. How do we stop it? Hello? Same way we do. Hello? That we enjoy fellowship with one another, that we can go together in, as groups, we can live and work together, we just don't go with one another and we just don't mix our races. And you say, rah, 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 rah. I hear some of you. That's fine. I won't tell you what, people. There's only... There, what did you say? How many percent? Huh? There's only 13% of the population that is of your color. If we continue to... Mix it, you ain't going to be none of you left. <laughs> See, ain't nobody going to be able to say, black is beautiful, they're going to have to say, mix is beautiful. I don't mean that wrong. I don't think that we ought to mix any of the races. That's my personal opinion, okay? I'm not, I didn't tell you not to do it. And I'm not going to throw you out if you have. But I'm talking about an issue that we have a problem with. Not just in church. And some of you that don't even know about it. Because, my Lord. <laughs> my wife said quit. It is a problem that is being had all over the United States. Not just here. But if we will establish relationships, we can have tremendous results. We can live and work together in unity and harmony. And we can be what God wants us to be. And we can live right, talk right, 
Do what God wants. The parents don't provoke your children. Children don't provoke your parents. Obey them if you want to live long. And I've gone too long. I'm sorry. Bow your heads, please. Now, <clears throat> I told you, we read it. The Bible says avoid the appearance of evil. Now, it, that tape appears to me to be racist. Now, again, I'm not trying to find fault with the individual. I'm trying to deal with an issue and uh, an issue that I believe is very important. I wanted you to hear it because you get the inflections, you get the, the stressing of this, that, and the other. And it wasn't like an off the cuff one word. That's eight minutes worth. That's eight minutes. You don't just say that off the cuff, eight minutes. There's a biblical principle that says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I want to play this again. I hope, were you able to hear that? Yeah. All right, play the tape and be prepared to stop it. I can't tell your kids who to go with and who not to go date. Not my responsibility. If you don't want your kids dating somebody, then you control it. But you control it a long time before they ever get to be dating age. Now, did you hear that? See, this is where all this garbage comes from. See, I realize, and I said this before, all of you that are listening to me now, black or white, you didn't, you didn't start it, and I didn't start it. But we all are the result of how we have been brought up. And certain things have been planted in the minds of people when they were children. Some things directly, and some things subliminally. And this stuff has come up in us, and when we see certain things, like Pavlov's dog, you ring the bell, and the dog salivates. Ain't even nothing to salivate about. But he's been conditioned by condition response that when he hears the bell, he salivates whether he sees any food or not. And so some people salivate when they see a black face, they salivate, and they do it because they've been conditioned, and it starts at the home. I hope you heard what he said. You do it a long time before they become dating age. Now, there are a lot of people that got upset with me some time ago when I made this statement, and I realize it's not everybody, and I'm not saying that it's everybody. Give me enough uh, credit for having that much sense, but it's too many, and the ones that perhaps don't haven't said anything about the ones that do, so that gives the ones that do the license to think they're right in continuing to do it because the others won't say anything about it. Right, right. But white people as a group, train their children. It starts in the house. It's not in the gene. It's not genetic. Now, that's not everybody. I know that. That's not everybody, and I'm not saying it's everybody. But you know what? It did not take every person who was a German and a citizen of Germany way back when Adolf Hitler came to power. It didn't take but one man to slaughter millions of innocent people. Amen. So it's not about the fact that we're saying it's everybody. It doesn't have to be everybody. It can be just enough to start a war and to annihilate and extinguish the lives of six million people plus all the other millions that we, they don't even talk about them as though they don't even count. We only remember the Holocaust. The Jews that were destroyed. What about all the other people? What about the people in Poland? What about the people in Hungary? What about all those other people that lost their lives and lost everything they had? Nobody ever thinks about them. They don't even count. You talk about we're friends. We can be friends with everybody. We are not prejudiced, but we are not going to date this group of people. It's not in our, it's not in our, it's not, it's not in our culture to do it. We're not going to do it. Now, see, my only thing is this. That's fine with me. <laughs> you don't want to date. But, but there is a certain thing in my mind called cause and effect. And for every effect, there's a cause. And the effect is we don't date these people. That's the effect. Got to be a cause. I want to know why not. And we just read all the scriptures about honesty. If you're honest, you got to tell me why not. Why not? God doesn't have a problem with it. Why do you? 
If you want to, there's no problem with that. That's fine. You're not a racist. You're, and you're not prejudiced just because you set down those kind of roads. Hello? If you want, I'm walking deep, that's right. But if you want, if you want mixed, fine. That's, if you want it, that's fine. But if you don't want it, then you control it. And you don't have to be a racist about it. And I'm not afraid to talk about it because I, I've got 30% of a different uh, black in this, in this congregation. See, the whole thing is black. See, it's this black and white thing. See, he said we got all these other people, but he didn't talk about the Hispanics. He didn't mention the Hispanics. He didn't mention the Asian, only the blacks. I hope you're picking up on this. I'm dealing with a symptom here. I'm not dealing with the man. I'm dealing with a symptom, but he represents something. When you're a leader and you stand in the pulpit and minister to people, somebody's going to believe that what you say is from God. And that's how this crap got the way it is now because of so-called leaders and ministers getting up talking this kind of stuff. Nobody challenging them. That day's over. <laughs> day's over. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. Roll the tape. Talk to many of them. Talk to the men about it. I've talked to the about it. I've talked to the I've talked to a lot of these people about it. And they all understand where I'm coming from. I do too. We got some beautiful mixed marriages in our congregation, but I have talked to them also, and they have, they have not been without their problem. Now, isn't that something? See, here's what he's saying. He's saying that only mixed marriages have marital problems. So if you stay within your so-called ethnicity and only marry people of your kind, you're not gonna have any marital problems. Give it a rest. A marital problem is a marital problem. I don't give a care if it's a financial problem, a sexual problem, a wife beating problem, a husband beating problem, a molesting of kids problem, a drug problem, an alcohol problem, whatever it is, a gambling problem, it's still a problem and it can wreck a marriage. Give it a rest. They have not been without their problems. I don't know of any married couple that haven't been without their problem. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Hello? <laughs> Come on, people. Let's be, let's get our head out of the sand. And I'll get accused again like I always do that I'm against mixed marriage. I did not say I was against mixed marriage. Now, I want you to hear this carefully because this is, this, this is awesome. He said, I am not against mixed marriages. Did you hear him say that? Or did I miss this? He said, I'm not against mixed marriages. Well, then if you're not, there should be nothing else to say about it. Hey, if you're not against it, you must be for it. to you, but if you don't want your kids involved in it, then you're the one that has to do something about it, not the church. Yeah, that's see, not the church. If the church doesn't have an influence on how you live your life and raise your kids, what on God's green earth is the church and the Bible good for? <laughs> I have always been a very sexually active person. I enjoy my sexual encounters with my wife immensely. I like sex <laughs> with my wife. 
But I have had many offers since I have been married to my wife from other women that are not my wives. And my body wanted to do so because my body, like your body, has never yet been born again. Only our spirits have been changed. But the Bible, because it influences my life, tells me that that's adultery and that's against God and God doesn't like it. So I tell my body, no, you're not going to do that. My point, my point is that if the, if the church and the Bible are not going to have any influence on your actions and your thoughts, I mean, I, 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 I don't understand that. Roll the tape. And just because you change churches, it's not going to have the problem. Some people say, well, no, we'll change churches. No, we'll move away. We'll go somewhere else and start all over. No, it's not. You, you. You're not, you're just going to take the problem with you. I didn't know that it was a problem. <laughs> God never says it's a problem. Why is it a problem? It's only a problem when you object to it. Amen. But just because you object to it, does it make it wrong? Hello? <laughs> Many years ago, was in the kindergarten. See, we beeped out the name of the child. See, see, many years ago when was in kindergarten. That's where the garbage starts. That's where it starts. A little young impressionable mind, like a piece of raw clay. We came home. This young little man was there, nice young man. But black, probably. We just talked to the we said, hey, look, we friends, we play. We, we go together as groups, but we don't date one another. I mean, we started in kindergarten. Now, I want you to, to remember when, when he started, when they started. Now, can you imagine what kind of message does it send to that little innocent child? Obviously, that child is going to begin to think that there's something wrong with those people. That's how it starts. Subliminally. That's how it starts, see? And every time they see one of those people, that sends a message that there must be something wrong with those people. And really, there must be something wrong with them. When you tell us, when you tell us, we can go together as groups, we can play together, but we just don't date one another, and we don't mix our races. So that sends a message that there must be something wrong with that race. Hello? <laughs> That's just with our rules. Now, once, you want somebody gets up and they get of age, they get to be 21, 18. Then they can choose to do what they want to. You ain't got no choice. You, you, you can't do nothing about it. They're on their own. I tell you what, the Bible says if you train a child up the way you want it to go, when it gets old, it won't depart. It now see, now this man, let me say you this. This man was raised on the Bible. Amen. This man didn't just get saved three weeks before he preached that sermon. He's been around the Word of God probably before he was born. It, it, it was in, almost in the genes, if you would. And, and, and that, was a, that was not a mistake because you can tell by the context of everything that he said, it fits right in. So he says, you train up a child in the way you want it to go. That's unscriptural. The Bible does not say that. The Bible says you train up in the child the way he should go, which is God's way, not your racist, prejudiced way. Train up a child in the way 
you want it to go. That's exactly why we had a problem. If you train the child up in the way of God, it wouldn't be no problem with racism. You got the problem and you pass that icky disease onto your children. Wobble around a while, but it'll come back. Hello? You say, well, my Lord, soul pastor, you, you talking heavy, I am, and I've gotten close to air conditioning because I'm sweating like everything. But I'll tell you something. <clears throat> I just decided that if I'm going to teach on it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn over every stone there is. Like it or lump it. Now, isn't that interesting? He said, I decided that if I'm going to teach on it, I'm going to turn over every stone. Now, why are you getting on my case for turning over every stone? See that? That's all right for him. So you see, to me then, that could not be just an offhand remark. He said, he decided, I decided if I'm going to teach on it, I'm going to turn over every stone. So that's not just an off-the-cuff, spontaneous, extemporaneous statement. It's got to be premeditated. I decided if I'm going to teach on it, I'm going to turn over every rock. Amen or oh me! Now I'm going to tell you what... You, I, I'm white, and I'm saying this, so a lot of people, yeah, he's white. Hey, I got a lot of, we have had a lot of the, the black parents that have come to us, and they say, we don't like this, we don't want this. How do we stop it? Hello? The same way we do. Tell them that we enjoy fellowship with one another, that we can go together as groups, we can live and work together, we just don't go with one another and we just don't mix our races. I, guess I, rah, 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 rah. I hear some of you. That's fine. I won't tell you what, people. There's only... There, what did you say? How many percent? Huh? There's only 13% of the population that is of your color. If we continue to mix it, you ain't going to be none of you left. <laughs> See, ain't nobody going to be able to say, black is beautiful. They're going to have to say, mix is beautiful. I don't mean that. What's wrong with mix? Amen. I mean, if you want it, you know, what... Well, so what's so bad about mix? Ah, it. Um, I don't think that we ought to mix any of the races. That's my personal. Oh, um, go ahead, go ahead. That's my personal opinion. Opinion, okay? No, I didn't tell you not to do it, and I'm not gonna throw you out if you have. But I'm just gonna put you on a guilt trip. <laughs> No, I didn't tell you not to do it, and I'm not going to throw you out, but I'm going to put you on a guilt trip because your pastor doesn't think we ought to mix any of the races. What kind of message are you sending to people? But I'm talking about an issue that we have a problem with, not just in <laughs> church and some of you that don't even know about it because, my Lord, <laughs> my wife said quit. It is a problem that is being had all over the United States. Now, he admits there's a problem. But it's not a racism problem. It's not a color, ethnic, prejudice problem. It's an inner marriage problem. It's mixing that inferior black blood with the superior white blood. That's the real issue. And he said it's all, we have the problem all over America. Well, if, we have the, if it is a problem, and I agree with him, and it's all over America, don't you think somebody ought to address the problem? Yes, sir. <laughs> I have been assigned the task. 
Yes, I'm angry. So go tell it on the mountain. I'm mad just like Jesus was mad when he went in the temple and whipped them turkeys out of there for selling in God's house. I'm just as righteously indignant as Jesus was when he stood in that group of people and there was a man there who had a withered hand. And the Bible said that Jesus told the man to stand forth in the midst. And then the Bible says he looked around upon them with anger, being grieved at the hardness of their hearts. That's kind of anger. I'm not mad at any individual person, but I'm angry about a situation that nobody before I ever got here, the problem was there and nobody ever apparently addressed it because I wouldn't have to be dealing with it now if somebody had 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, had dealt with the doggone thing. Yeah. So that's the kind of anger. It's holy, righteous indignation. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not mad at any group of people. Don't take it personally. But I'm mad about a principle that should have been dealt with and nobody dealt with it. I am... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just here, but if we will establish relationships how can we establish a relationship based on dishonesty? That's what it amounts to. How are we going to have a relationship and you don't like me because I'm black? How are we going to have a relationship? And every time I come around you and bring my son, I'm on pins and needles because you're wondering whether he's going to drag your little old white nappy head girl out somewhere and marry her. <laughs> Well, that's what it's all about. How are we going to have a relationship? And I'm on my pins and needles all the time because you wondering whether he's going to have eyes for your child or your child have eyes for him. How are we going to have a relationship? Give it a rest. Okay. Now, again, my purpose in that tape was not to not to say anything about the individual. I didn't mention the person's name and we bleeped out all the other names that anybody that does not already know the situation would not know, okay? That was not my purpose. My purpose was to deal with some information that came out of the tape, okay? And to me, it appears to be racist. And the Bible said, avoid that, abstain from that. Now, this tape was given to me by a delegation of black ministers who were hurt, outraged, and bewildered by its content. They were doubly mystified by it coming from a ministry which was held in such high esteem in the charismatic community. They came to me because of my long-standing relationship with this ministry. I had to respond. See, I, I could have kept quiet about it. I could have just let it pass by. Because, see, at that time, really, I was, in essence, I was the house nigger. God, and God did it. I didn't do it. I've never sought anybody's approval. I don't, I don't need that. I don't do that. I'm not impressed by people. I don't need to be around any so-called big folk. God is bigger than everybody, and I'm with God. That's good enough for me. And so I'm not, I'm not interested in being in, up under somebody's behind, you know, sniffing around. I don't need to do that. But God did it. God raised me up and gave me a relationship. And I, and I know why now, as I look back in retrospect, I know why. Because it gave those people an opportunity to see over a 20-year period that we were just like they were. The only difference was the exterior color of our skin. They've been in our home. They've lived in our house. And they've ate at our table and eaten our food. And so they know that it really is no different. In fact, they even said later on when we talked about it, they said, well, we didn't look at you like that. So I had... I had to respond, see? And because I responded, they put me back in the field. I'm a field nigga now. And, and some others, hey, hey, and some others, some others who used to be field niggas, they now, in, they ran to the house. I kid you not. And they left me out in the field. Well, my wife and I confronted this man one-on-one, -on -one because that's what the Bible says to do. Turn in your Bibles to uh, Galatians chapter 2. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, we getting down to the nitty, 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 gritty, 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 nitty. Mm -mm -mm. Galatians chapter, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Galatians chapter 2. I might as well give it up. I'm out of time. I'm All right. Is the unknown minister Ernest Angley? See, I pull up a recording of his voice to see if it matches with the voice you've been hearing. And it definitely sounds like Ernest Angley. Or is it Kenneth Hagin? 
and listen to his voice and does it match? Now, to me, it didn't didn't match, but you may have a different opinion on that. I looked I looked up um, information on both men and I saw nothing on their Wikipedia's, but the voice again sounds like Angeli, and there is um, one article from the L.A. Times that vaguely says it's Hagen. So, what do you think? What do you say? Oh, and by the way, go to the video description and click on the link to my book, The Black Emperors of Rome. Enough said.